It's all about your questions with family and finances. Today, we're diving into the listener mailbag. We're going to look at the best ways to spend your tax refund, how to save up for a house down payment, whether or not refinancing to pay off your debt is a good idea, and much more. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. One of my favorite parts of creating Simplify and Enjoy is the community. While I'm happy to share our journey towards financial freedom as a family, it's fun when you chime in with your wins, stories, ideas, and questions. That's what we're going to be diving into, your family and finance questions from the mailbag. There's a lot of fantastic topics we're going to be touching on. In this episode, we'll discuss how to save up and where to stash for a big goal like a house down payment, wise ways to use your tax refunds, And considering the question, is refinancing your home to pay off debts a good idea? We have plenty to cover, so let's get started. The first question in the mailbag is, where and how do I start saving up for a big goal? The whole process is covered in detail in my free course, 5 Days to 5K. I actually created it because this is one of the most common questions families have. We have a lot of different goals that we're trying to pursue, but where does the money come from? It walks you through step-by-step on how to analyze and optimize your finances. You can grab it at simplifyandenjoy.com slash 5K, but let me give you a high-level review of the process. The first step is you should get a ballpark of how much you need to save and when you'll need it. It's hard to measure progress if you don't know what goal you're working towards. Even if it's not entirely accurate, getting a ballpark figure can give you a measurement of how close or how long it's going to take to hit your goal. Then you can work backwards to see what your monthly contribution needs to be. The third step is looking at your current budget. Calculate the difference between what you can put away now towards your goal and make sure you automate that transfer right away and what you need to fill in the gap you may discover that you're much closer to your goal than you originally thought. Once you have that number in place and you do have some transfer going into savings, the next step is to look at your budget. You're looking at your income and expenses. You really have to look at both sides of the coin. The first step I recommend with families is optimizing that budget. And in the course, I go through some easy wins that you can have with your finances, of course, The big one for many families is food. But then I also look at bills where many families are paying much more than they need to for the services that they're getting. I'll give an example. Your smartphone bill. Did you know that the average American cell phone bill is $70 for a single user? When you have two or more lines, that can quickly balloon. The great news is that there are providers out there who use a hybrid model The technology relies both on cell data and Wi-Fi that can drastically cut your bill in half and sometimes more. Options you might want to consider are Republic Wireless, Mint Mobile, and Google Fi. That's just one example from the course. I look at other expenses where you can save and find better alternatives that makes it easier to keep more money in your pocket. The other side of the equation, which sometimes families forget, is the income. After all, there's only so much you can do with optimizing your budget, even though that can be a big one. Besides getting a second job, you might want to look at opportunities in the share economy that fit your schedule and circumstances. Some obvious ones are doing deliveries or driving for Uber or Lyft, but you may find that something that's more suited towards you is pet sitting. Maybe you don't mind picking up electric scooters if that's around your city and recharging them. You could get paid for that. And then also, believe it or not, merchandising. My friend Sandy from Yes, I Am Cheap and the creator of the Side Hustle Crew has a great side hustle selling mugs through Amazon. And she has a course that teaches you how to set that up yourself 
with whatever item you're thinking of drop shipping. You want to weigh the pros and cons to find a side gig that fits your schedule and circumstance. But hopefully I gave you some ideas on how to start saving for whatever big goal you have. But don't forget again, sign up for that course. It's completely free. It's at simplifyandenjoy.com slash 5K. Since we're on the topic of saving, let's jump into the second question. What's the best way to save for a house down payment? This is fantastic because this means that you are thinking ahead and making sure that you have a sizable down payment for your home. Having 20% down can be beneficial for you because that's typically the threshold for lenders where you don't have to pay for private mortgage insurance or PMI. Keep in mind that there are other programs and mortgages that you may qualify for where you don't have to put such a big down payment. Options like USDA loans, FHA, VA, and depending on where you live, there could be down payment assistant grants. Whatever option you choose, it's always good to have money saved up, both for buying the house and when you become a homeowner, having something stashed away for home maintenance and care. So where should you put that money? There are a few options. I have to mention the most obvious, which is savings accounts. As boring as it is, this can be the right account for you because more than likely you'll be needing to have this money accessible in the near future. While investing can be a great long-term option for savings such as retirement, they're not so great for short-term savings because the market can be volatile year to year. If you're looking at savings account but you're not happy with the interest rate that's available, then you might want to consider high yield savings accounts. Look at your community banks, local credit unions, online banks. Typically, they offer more competitive rates with their savings accounts than some of the big banks because they don't have as big of an overhead to cover. Finally, there's an account I recently learned about that might be of interest to you. It's called a first-time home buyer savings account. Only a handful of states offer it, like Colorado, Oregon, and Virginia, so you have to double-check to see if it's available in your state. It's a tax advantage account that can be used for eligible expenses, such as your down payment and closing costs. If you're thinking of buying a house in the near future, please catch those episodes where I talk with Daymark agents about, one, how to find those hidden gems of neighborhoods so you can get a great location and what you're looking for at an affordable price, and how to figure out if you're really getting a great deal with a fixer-upper or it's a money pit. I'll include the links in the show notes. This third question really fits in with the fact that we're in tax season. It's how should we spend our tax refund? Tax refunds can be a great opportunity to give yourselves a boost and set yourselves up for an awesome year financially. There's a couple of ways you can go with this. The key is to figure out what stage you are, financially speaking, and what are your goals for the year. The first way you can boost your wealth and make sure that you're taken care of is building that financial cushion. That's right. You got to start with the foundation. Make sure that you have an emergency fund that is stashed away for any hiccups that can come this year. The rule of thumb is $1,000 as a starter but you want to look at your circumstances. You may find that $1,000 doesn't cover an emergency. We found out these past couple of years, we can't control a lot of things that happen to us, but we can be better prepared. That will not only help us on the financial side, but reduce a lot of the stress when you go through these tough situations. A second way that you can make this tax refund go so much further is by paying down or paying off your high interest debts. Yep, I'm talking about credit cards. If you have them, you probably already know that they're basically quicksand with your monthly budget. So feel free to go ahead and knock out a few of those. Another money-savvy way to use your tax refund is to increase your contributions towards goals like retirement. Have you maximized your contributions with your IRA this past year? If the two of you are pursuing a goal of financial independence, have you contributed to a brokerage account? 
Don't worry if you haven't, you can start now with that tax refund. Even though it might not be technically financially savvy, one last tip I would say is do keep a portion of that tax refund for something that you can enjoy. Perhaps you've discovered a new hobby during this pandemic. You can upgrade that so you can enjoy it even more. Or you can have that set aside for a family vacation. Having these rewards can recharge you and keep you motivated with the other big goals that you have in mind. Finally, as a reminder, if you're getting a rather large tax refund, double check why. It could be that you're withholding too much in your paychecks. While we all love getting a nice big lump sum of money, many families have found that having that money sooner in their paychecks through the year is better than later. This last one is a really good question. Should we refinance our home to pay off debt? First off, anytime someone asks me, should we do something? I want to be very clear. I love giving you information about options that you have or resources that are available, but you really have to sit down and consider your family's specific circumstances. Sometimes those seemingly small details can make all the difference with what's the best decision in your case. While I do feel great that you want to pay off debts, this is definitely not a decision I would rush into. There are a few things to consider and talk about, so why don't we go into them? Let's start off with why people use refinancing to pay off debts. Typically, it's because mortgage rates have a much lower interest rate than other debts, especially when you're talking about credit cards. Currently, the mortgage rate for a person with good credit, we'll say about 670 to 739, is around 4.2%, while the average credit card interest is 16.5% for someone with the same credit. Depending on the balance you're carrying, that could be a significant savings in interest if you were refinancing to pay off that debt. So it sounds reasonable, but let's also consider that not all debts are equal. With things like your credit cards, those are considered unsecured loans while your mortgage is secured. Unsecured means you don't have anything backing the loan, so to speak. So if you don't pay your credit card, they'll go after you, but there's only so much they can do. Secured means you have something of value backing it up. So if you don't pay your mortgage, you could lose your home. One of the first steps I would suggest is gathering up all the data and dig into the debt that you want to consolidate. What type of debt is it? Can you negotiate a better rate? Have you gotten your spending under control? For example, if this is a credit card debt, have you decided and have a system where you're not going to go back into that same debt? I hate for you to be not only back where you are with the debt, but now have your house on the line. Okay, now that you have that in front of you, let's go over two common refinancing options. The first is rate and term refi, and then a cash out refi. Both of these will require you to qualify in terms of your credit score and have equity in your home. With a rate and term refi, you're taking out a new mortgage, either with a new and lower interest rate, different term, or both. The goal here is getting a better deal on your mortgage so that your payments go down and that monthly savings, that difference you use to pay down the other debt. You're not actually tying that extra debt into your mortgage. It's still separate. Cash out refi is in essence where you're rolling your debt into a new mortgage. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have $150,000 left on your mortgage and your house is now worth $250,000. That's $100,000 in equity that you have. You also have $20,000 of credit card and medical debt that you want to get rid of. Because you have enough value or equity in your house to cover it, you can do a cash out refi. With the refi, your old mortgage is paid off. You now have a new mortgage of at least $170,000. Remember your original one hundred fifty dollars left on the mortgage and you want to cover that $20,000 of debt. And the reason I say at least 
is that there are closing costs with a refinance. You'll get a check for the difference. In this example, we'll say $20,000, which you can then use to pay off and close those debts. If you decide to refinance, as you can see, there's a lot that goes into it. First off, will you qualify for the loans with your credit report and score? Do you have the equity in your home to do this? And if the refi is done, can you afford the new payments? Besides refinancing, there are some other ways you can consolidate your debt, and I'll include them in the show notes. Thanks for sending in your questions. It's always fascinating to me to see what goals you guys are pursuing and what you're trying to work on. So please keep sending them in. I'd love to do this again. If you're like us, you probably have quite a number of accounts between the two of you, including your old 401ks. It can be difficult to stay on top of everything, especially when your old employer switches providers, which is what happened with my husband. Here's where our sponsor Capitalize can help. Capitalize helps you find and roll over an old 401k into an IRA of your choice for free. They handle the entire process. And yes, that includes calling your old employer or the 401k provider on your behalf. If you're ready to make managing your old 401ks much easier, find out more at simplifyandenjoy.com slash capitalize. We're going to skip the usual key takeaways. So I can talk to you about three ways we can stay connected in case you have any questions about family finances. They can be tricky. And you don't have to wait for another episode of the listener mailbag. You can send it in much sooner. The first way is with the newsletter. Not only will you be getting the latest episodes, articles, and helpful resources sent straight to your inbox each week, it's also the easiest way to stay connected. When you have a question, all you have to do is hit reply to that newsletter and it gets sent to me. I read all the questions. I may have to do some research, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to join the newsletter, it's free to sign up. Like I mentioned, I have a free course that's included if you want to. Just go to simplifyandenjoy.com slash 5K. The second way you can do this is on the site itself. I really enjoyed doing this episode and I love hearing from you. So I created a widget, a little form. You just click on the link on the side of simplifyandenjoy.com and you can submit your questions there. Finally, don't forget, we have a Facebook community called Thriving Families. What you may not know is that this group is actually a collaboration of several personal finance creators who are also parents. We wanted to find a way to help other families tackle those big money questions and still balance things out with our own families. I think it makes us the best community because we have a pretty good idea of where you're coming from. If you want to join, just go to simplifyandenjoy.com slash FB. We'd love to see you there. Special thanks to you for being a part of this episode. Seriously, one of my favorite parts about writing on Simplify and Enjoy is hearing from you, whether it's a question, idea for a future podcast episode or article, or just a tag on social media. As always, I'll have the resources we mentioned in the episode over at simplifyandenjoy.com. Next week on the podcast, have you ever thought about being an Airbnb host? Can you really make some money with it? We talked to a host who shares her experience from setting her place up, figuring out the prices, and making her guests stay fun and relaxing. So if you don't want to miss out on that episode, make sure you subscribe to the show. We're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Our theme song was by Staircases, additional music by various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, thank you again not just for listening to the show, but for all your support. I want to make the show as helpful and relevant as possible. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.